All right, guys, dealing with a cheater is one of the most demotivating, frustrating, and rage-inducing things that can happen to you in a competitive game. Hackers just suck, and Lord knows a lot of the anti-cheat systems and reporting tools out there leave a lot to be desired when it comes to effectiveness. But what if I told you there was one guy, one guy, who was willing to go so far as to hold a developer hostage, willing to go so far as to receive death threats in order to fight back against hackers ruining solo queue everywhere. That's what today's Don't At Me is all about. All right, so you may have noticed things look a little different around here right now. And that's because, like everybody else at the Score Esports, I'm working from home to help stop the spread of COVID-19. But rest assured, the content will not be stopping. Not even a little. All right, so let's get back to the video here. Hackers, cheaters, wallers, aimbotters, whatever you call them, we've all encountered them, and they suck. They ruin your game and waste your time. And even happens to the pros. So what do you do? You right click on their name, you click report, and most of the time, nothing happens. You move on with your life. But there's one guy out there who's spending his life, maybe even risking his life, to expose cheaters and hackers and get them banned. He's kind of like the cops for gamers, at least when it comes to Overwatch. Cops. Central Organization of Police Specialists. Fighting crime in a future time. His name is Mohammed Al Sharifi, but he usually goes by GamerDoc, and he runs the Overwatch Police Department. They're a community of people dedicated to catching and exposing not only people who use cheat software, but the people who develop it and sell it too. See, I bet you think your game is full of cheaters. Lord knows I've complained about CSGO matchmaking enough times, but it's nothing compared to the hacking problem that Overwatch seems to have. It looks like an AI almost, but I think it's a human. I don't know, to be honest, at this point. So it's just like completely hard locking. This game is infested with cheaters and Blizzard, by all accounts, is doing a pretty bad job of controlling it. So with a weak anti-cheat and no like ESEA or FPL equivalent for Overwatch, anybody who wants to play is stuck in this hell of macro scripts, aimbots, and wall hacks. And that's where GamerDoc and the OWPD come in. They're like, sheriffs in a wild west town full of hackers. So if you spot a hacker, for example, and you're tired of reporting them and not seeing them banned by Blizzard, you use the OWPD's portal to report them, which is kind of like a police report. We have like a, a really cool report system. Uh, so everything's like organized and good. So we'll take the date, uh, date of the incident, the time of the incident, and the battle tag of the person uh, that was cheating and the battle tag of the person that was in the game. And then we collect all that information and then hand it over to Blizzard for them to investigate the incident. We also like send a video footage of the like one or two minute clips of the person cheating and also like a full replay. With any luck, the suspect gets banned after that, but OWPD and GamerDoc also publicly name and shame cheaters. And sometimes that gets the job done. Surprisingly, uh, Two or two or four cheaters came forward to me in my DMs saying that they actually feel embarrassed that they're cheating. They just like come to me like some kind of like a reflection that they're saying I'm 16 years old. I just wanted to feel cool and this kind of stuff. I'm like, uh, you can just do the same thing by just practicing. So I do I do get like these weird messages uh, of people like. Um, self-reflecting or something like that, like feeling sorry they are cheating. They also keep extensive files on active cheaters so you can see what kind of cheats they're probably using and when they're online. But the chief of the Overwatch PD doesn't just email Blizzard and call it a day. Sometimes he takes the law into his own hands, like the time he got his hands on the full source code for a cheat and threatened to release it to the public if Blizzard didn't take action. Like we had a source code, an entire source code of a cheat that we sent to Blizzard a couple of times, like uh, for the past six months, and Blizzard didn't detect it at all. I got to my limits and basically put out a tweet saying, in a week time, if Blizzard doesn't get this cheat detected, I will release the entire public cheat for everyone to use. In a week time, in five days actually, uh, the cheat got finally detected 
and it was the biggest detection ever. It was like around 5,000 users banned. Now, not everybody thought issuing Blizzard a one-week ultimatum was the best idea, but desperate times breed desperate men. GamerDoc spends his own time and money to infiltrate discords and private forums that cheaters use to gather evidence on hackers. He's even become the moderator of a few of these cheating servers himself to catch people in the act, and the hackers have no idea. He's basically an undercover agent at this point. Now, I said earlier that GamerDoc might be risking his life to do this, and I know it sounds crazy, but this dude gets death threats. There's a lot of people who are just like, send death threats towards me or just like shame my shame how i look or just saying how they're gonna get a hitman after me and try and get me killed or uh people who are also like faking my address like they have doxed my address but none of it really happened i know it's never going to happen because i'm not really scared of these kind of guys i'm not really scared of any developer out there because at the end of the day i am the one who's chasing them and they are the ones who are hiding. Now, when it comes to the actual work this guy does, we're not just talking about Noob Master 69 installing an aimbot he found on Google. GamerDoc also goes after the people who sell, develop, and distribute these cheats. Sometimes he says he has one cheat developer coming to him with information about another, so OWPD can take them down and eliminate the business competition. It's crazy. And by the way, guys, business is good. The more sophisticated hacks can cost you over a thousand dollars to buy into and hundreds of dollars a month to subscribe to. All to be good at a dead game. Oh, 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 tell him about that. himself. Tell him about himself. Tell him about himself. Let him know. Tell him. I am kidding. Overwatch people, please do not come to my house and kill me. Now, death threats aside, it's also a big job to help lead this community of hacker hunters and all the infrastructure that supports it. And GamerDoc has a full-time job in real life. On a week-to-week -week basis, he says that OWPD takes away as much time as a part-time job would. It's not like Blizzard's helping. I do send them a ton of information every single week, or like even every like four days, I send them like a ton of information on every single cheat that's available currently. Uh, files, um, what to do, everything pretty much. And we just don't see anything happening. Recently, they even said that they had two big anti-cheat efforts, which really didn't do anything, then stop uh, the dev cheat developers for like three days, five days, and then they got their cheats back running up. Okay, okay, so let's recap here. Countless hours of work, death threats, no help from Blizzard. Kind of makes you wonder why this guy would even do this. Well, I asked him exactly that. I do this because I love um, esports and I love video games in general. And because I'm now 24 years old, um, you know, I've had my fair share of esports already. And so I wanted to do something good for the community. I know what it's like to go against a cheater, and I know what it's like to lose against someone that you shouldn't lose. So I just, I usually just do this because of the more next generation of gamers. So this is sort of a set, but it's, it's also hella real. This bookshelf was always there. This bookshelf was on the opposite end of the room. So I moved them together so you guys could see all my nerdy treasures. You know, maybe you guys can do a little scavenger hunt for what's in the back of my, uh, my set here. Don't ever talk to me. Don't ever fucking talk to me about cyberpunk. If you, have to, if you haven't read the seminal piece of trash that is Batman Digital Justice. Just don't even talk to me.